Today we raise our drinking horns to our ancestors who dine in the halls of Valhalla. What's that? You don't have a drinking horn? Who doesn't have a drinking horn? All right, it's fine. We'll fix that. What up fam? Welcome to Skill Tree where we learn how to do just about everything. So today we're gonna learn how to make one of these nifty Viking drinking horns. Let me step back and say it's kind of weird just to call it a Viking drinking horn for two reasons. The practice of using horns to drink from actually dates from way before the Vikings. The Thracians and the Scythians were using them back in the 5th and 6th centuries. It went up through Greece and Rome and found its way into Europe during the Iron Ages. Long story short, these things have been around for way longer than the Viking Age. And the second reason it's weird to call this a Viking drinking horn is because I'm a nerd! As such, I decided to go with a fantasy design using elvish text and imagery. So it's kind of an elvish drinking horn. That being said, it is my creation and how metal would a Viking elf be, honestly. Anyway, let's get started and level up this skill. Step one, getting the horn. First things first, you need to get yourself a horn. I got mine from Tandy Leather and they come looking like this, already sanded and cored out and pretty. If you opt to get a raw horn, they're gonna look like this and you have a lot more work to do it. You gotta smooth the outside and get all the meatiness out from the inside. Regardless which way you go, you're gonna have to clean the horn. Okay, so even like the prepared horns you get from Tandy have little meaty scraps inside and a special aroma. You don't want any of that stuff floating around in your drink. So first we gotta get out all those little chunks. To do that, stand the horn upright and carefully add boiling water. After a few minutes, you can pour out the hot water and use a bottle brush or some sort of a scraping device to get out all the chunks. You may have to do this a few times before all the little meaty bits come out, but again, trust me, you do not want to be enjoying a drink and then having a little fleshy, meaty thing. We're good. Curing the horn. Now the horn is still gonna stink and give off kind of an unpleasant taste to anything you put in there. To get rid of this, stand the horn up somewhere where it can be completely level and fill it with a clear, strong spirit. I use vodka for this. Now leave it there for a week. Okay, I know this seems like a long time, but it's how long it took my horn to completely lose the taste and smell. That being said, if you're sealing the inside of the horn, you don't have to do it for as long. And though I do seal this horn, I just seriously didn't like the smell. So a week it was. Just make sure to top off any alcohol that evaporates during this time. Okay, now comes the fun bit. Decorate the horn. Now that your horn's all nice and clean, it's time to pretty it up with some decorations. I find it best to lay out your design on the horn with a pencil so you can erase any mistakes as you go. Now I'm gonna be grinding this in with a Dremel, but you can paint it or glue crap onto it, whatever floats your longship, really. Just relax, take your time, throw on some music or some TV in the background and enjoy the process. If you do choose to carve it out as I did, these are the Dremel bits I used. This sharp one is good for super fine detail and this rounded one works great for the broader lines. If you absolutely have to choose just one of them, I picked a little round one here. I used it for like 99% of the project. You could really just use this one. I used a vacuum and dust mask because this stuff no es bueno to breathe in, my friends. Go slow and be careful not to carve straight through the horn, but carve deep enough so the coloring in the next step will stick. Once done, I used 600 grit sandpaper to knock down any rough edges. Then washed all of the dust out of the grooves with some soapy water. Now it's time to add some color to those lines. This is actually really simple. Just grab some acrylic paint and smear it into the carvings. Then use a moist cloth to wipe away any of the excess. As you can see, the color stays in the deep grooves. If the paint comes out of your carvings, it just means that you need to carve it a little bit deep. Sealing the horn. Okay, so I chose to seal this horn because it feels cleaner to do so. Uh, but if you did the week long kind of curing process with alcohol, you technically do not need to. The plus side to sealing it is it protects the inside of the horn and mitigates any horny flavoring. That, that can't be right. I'm sticking with it, horny flavoring. The downside is you can't really drink hot liquids out of it as it will melt the beeswax that we use to seal the inside. Your choice, I'm not gonna be drinking hot liquids out of it, so I decided to seal it up. To seal the horn, I'm using pure beeswax that I bought from a local craft store. It can be hard to cut, but I found that a judicious application of hammer and chisel does the job just fine. Honestly, what kind of problem doesn't a hammer and chisel solve? Now, start by preheating the oven to 150 degrees. Mine would only go down to 170, but it seemed to work just fine. 
So this is just to heat up the horn so that you have more time to work with the beeswax once you put it inside, and you can ensure you end up with an even thin coat. Speaking of melting the beeswax, put the chunks you harvested into a metal container you don't care about and place into a pot of water you're heating on a stove top. As I'm sure my kinkier fans can attest to, beeswax is super hard to get out of stuff. I did this process with a coffee mug once and it, it just, it was never the same, that coffee mug. Never the same again. I now use one half of a small paint can and my life and sink are better for it. FYI, this is called a double boiler and you want to use this method because beeswax, highly flammable. So be careful with this step, you've been warned, it's no longer my responsibility. Once all the chunks have melted, remove the horn from the oven and carefully pour in the beeswax. Then simply pour it back out while rotating the horn to ensure all of the insides are covered. Finally, place the horn back in the now turned off oven and leave it there pointing down to cool. That last little bit of heat in the oven as it cools down ensures that the beeswax stays liquid long enough to drip out and doesn't clump anywhere. And it's gonna leave you with a nice even thin coat on the inside. Just make sure you put something underneath the horn to catch the melting wax because again, super flammable. Once cooled, you'll see that the wax inside the horn is barely even noticeable. To protect the outside of the horn, I opted to use butcher block conditioner as it is food safe. Simply add it to a rag and rub it into the horn. Then polish off any excess oil. This will help protect the outside of the horn and give it a nice shine. Congrats, you are now the proud owner of a custom drinking horn. Now my brothers and sisters, we toast. To leveling up our skills and giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. Seriously though, if you like the vid, make sure you give me that tasty thumbs up love and subscribe to the channel. Also leave any skills you might want to learn in the comment section and I will add it to the list. All right, well I gotta go. Ulfric wants us to raid an Imperial encampment tonight. In the meantime, keep leveling up you.